Good evening, everyone. I am back again. Can't wait to be back with you tonight. We are ending up a number of the topics that we have been discussing for the postpartum period. And I had moved to the topic of contraception. Tonight is going to be my last presentation on contraception in the postpartum period. Previously, we talked about non-hormonal contraceptives, but tonight we're going to talk about hormonal contraceptives and their side effects. So before we get going, I want to invite you all to please subscribe to my channel. You all have been so gracious, and I have had loads of views. However, those who are viewing my channel are not subscribing, so I'm going to invite you to subscribe that way you will continue to get the content that I will be providing in the coming weeks. You'll get that notification. But let's move forward. So let's first of all identify which are the hormonal contraceptives. Many of you already know them, but let's do a quick review. One is the combined oral contraceptive pill, generally known as the pill. Um, and it's called combined oral contraceptives because it includes both progestin and also estrogen. The next is your progestin-only pill. You also have your contraceptive combined vaginal ring, as well as the progestin-only ring. There are injectables, progestin injectables, then the monthly injectables. There is also the vaginal patch, implants, and then we have the copper IUD, and then the levonorgestrel IUD. These are your hormonal contraceptives. Now, many women are anxious to know what are the side effects, and oftentimes the concern about side effects is what will stop women from using any contraceptive method. And I want to caution you against that. What I would like to say is understand contraceptive methods, both the hormonal methods that we're discussing tonight and the non-hormonal methods. The other thing that's going to make a difference in regard to your choice about which method to use is going to be your health history. That will also be a determinator as to what is the best contraceptive method for you. So let's talk about the common side effects that you can expect if you are using hormonal contraceptives that include both estrogen and progestin. Those common side effects are going to include changes in bleeding depending on the contraceptive method that you are use, you will either see a lighter period or a period that doesn't last as long. You may also have irregular bleeding. You may have bleeding that is unpredictable bleeding that may occur, or it's possible that you can go to where you're having no monthly bleeding at all. And that can be somewhat bothersome for some women. For other women, they're welcome to have that. Other complaints that are normal complaints will be headaches. You could possibly have dizziness, nausea. You may also experience breast tenderness and sometimes breast pain. There may also be... Um, abdominal pain or that you may feel, as well as weight changes where there may be weight gain. These are normal kinds of complaints that you can uh, expect to experience. If you are using progestin-only hormonal contraceptives, they do not have the estrogen. They only have the progestin and you will find that there will be fewer side effects with these. The ones that uh, will present fewer side effects would be the progestin-only vaginal ring, 
the progestin-only pill, and the copper-bearing IUD. I have prepared uh, a free download that I will be putting on my website. I will put the link for that uh, in the commentary for tonight's uh, presentation. The other thing to be aware of is that there are some health benefits when you're using hormonal contraceptives, and there can also be some uh, further risks. One is that it can reduce your risk of pregnancy. We've talked about uh, when you become pregnant, you are exposed to uh, risks that can cause maternal death. I'm not suggesting that anybody who gets pregnant is going to experience maternal death, but pregnancy brings its own risks. And depending upon your family health and your own personal health history, uh, you can be more prone to having complications in pregnancy. The other thing that it protects against is cancer that's in the lining of the uterus known as endometrial cancer. And the other type of cancer that it can protect against is ovarian cancer. A few very uh, other risks that can occur that are more rare and more uncommon is blood clots. And that would be blood clots that could occur deep in the vein, either in your legs or in your lungs. It's a possibility very remote of stroke and also heart attack. Again, your family history and your personal history is very, very important when it comes to considering the type of hormonal contraceptive that you should use. So that's the information tonight in regard to hormonal contraceptives, its side effects, health benefits, and health risks. The next topic that I'm going to explore with you, and it also has something to do with pregnancy, is sexually transmitted infections. We don't think about that when we're thinking about having sex. We're not uh, thinking, oh, wow, I'm expecting to get a sexually transmitted infection uh, as I have sex. We're not thinking about these things. And it's possible to acquire a sexually transmitted infection. So sexually transmitted infections also can have some uh, effect on your baby if it is not uh, screened for and treated during pregnancy. So thank you again for your time. I'm going to ask you once again to let everyone know about my channel. As I always say, tell your mom, your dad, your sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, girlfriends, boyfriends, and your colleagues. And um, also, again, hit that subscribe button. I need you to subscribe. So have a great evening, and I look forward to coming back to you again soon. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.